All right, just finally uh, about to leave Perth and catch a taxi to the airport and then meeting my mate Andy there and we're going to be on a flight to Melbourne shortly. Okay, yeah, so Terminal 1's where they're going to spot. Okay. I'll see you there. All okay? right, Terminal 1, see you there, mate. Catch up. Right. Goodbye. This was to be Andy's first and my tenth time backpack hunting for Sambra into the Victorian Alps and to say that we were excited would be a total understatement. Andy and I are among many hunters who make the voyage to Victoria from interstate or internationally to chase Sambra. Well I've uh, just arrived in Melbourne and I'm still wearing my work clothes so Andy's picking up the hire car right now and I'm about to grab a coffee from here. Alright. Way. We're on the way, we're in Melbourne. Yeah, and then we'll do something special together as well, alright? Okay. Alright, honey. Bye. All right. Okay, love you, honey. Bye bye. Where's mummy? Uh, mummy, that wants you. Here, <laughs> yeah. we are Andy and I heading in for our backpack hunt. And we're in the snow line, which we won't be in the snow line for too long because we'll drop off some of us uh, southern facing slopes and get onto the warmer faces but we're just getting up into the top stuff now which is really good. For me there is nothing more satisfying than venturing into the great dividing range when the gates are still locked and there is something so uplifting about being high on the slopes with amazing Samba country in every single direction that we look. Our strategy was to camp high near snow so we had ongoing access to water and to use the elevation to our advantage when glassing onto opposite faces. We knew that in many cases our opportunities would be governed around first and last light and so, an immense amount of planning had gone into identifying prominent vantage points that offered a wide range of angles and perspective to allow our eyes to do the walking. In fact, our biggest challenge was going to be getting within a comfortable distance to make an effective shot. What did you say, Andy? I said there's a wallow in it. just there. You, you can see a wallow. Yeah. More importantly, is anything more lying there? Not at the moment. Is it'll it being it'll, used? It'll have a mud bath later on, I reckon. Does it look freshly used? Oh, just one second, I just want to... Quick, 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 he's big. Body of the dog. Look at this thing. It's got his head down, I can't see. Totally, he's head gear. How far away is it? Oh, mate, he's right. He's, oh, there's, there's a whole heap. There's hinds as well. Sorry. Yeah, quick before they can make move. So you know, see that snow line on the top of that ridge? If you went straight down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I was on that front. I wanted this because I had a feeling they'd be there. Just looking through there because it's a nice ledgy bit. You can see some trails. Andy's just got out of his own spotting scope. <clears throat> it's a maven. What's the power of that? We were both very impressed with the quality of the Maven spotting scope, which Andy quickly put to task by comfortably spotting a family of Samba at over three kilometres away. But, eager to check out what was directly beneath our feet, I sidled down through the cold wet bush and onto a series of broken ledges to glass for the afternoon. The deer sign was abundant after dropping 200 metres down off the main ridge and I sat down to glass the moment the faces opened up onto a series of sun-baked clearings. I had 
set up cam in a different attachment, or different bowl I should say, different uh, system of this main spur. The, um, the wind was starting to play some games so I'll be able to face back into the wind. Andy's up here somewhere, but his gear for camp still behind me. He will have to go and grab it. Oh, here he is here. Honk. Andy's just told me he fell asleep for an hour and a half. How's this? As the sun set over the Great Dividing Range, we found a flat spot in the snow tussock and pitched Andy's fly into the wind. Doing this allows through flow of air during the night and is a great way to minimise condensation. And with day one drawing to a close, it was time to boil snow for our dehydrated meals and to refill our water bladders in anticipation for day two.